I thank uh, members for their attendance in the chamber. And I'm going to read my speech, which I think is one of the few times in 20 years that I've ever read a speech in this House, but I don't want to miss anyone out. What to say after 20 years of parliament? So many things to talk about and especially so many people to thank. But first I will relate a brief history of my life for the record, as I will never again have the opportunity and it may help, may help the staff of the future preparing my eulogy for this House. <laughs> I was born in King Edward Memorial Hospital on the 24th of March 1953, with my mother travelling to Perth from Derby for the delivery on one of the old state ships. My first five years were in the Kimberley, mostly in Derby, where my grandfather was a butcher before coming to Perth. My father in his late twenties had decided to study medicine despite only having completed what is now called Year 10. He had worked as a stockman with main roads, as a shot fires assistant on Cockatoo Island and as a butcher and come to Perth with my mother, sister myself and another sister due. Sadly, my younger sister died soon after, but two more brothers arrived. Times were tough when we were young, with my father a student for eight years, but with a very resourceful mother, we didn't want for much although such delicacies as tripe, tongue, brains and lamb's fry were familiar dishes. I went to Bassendean Primary, then brief stints at Vic Park and Mandurah before finishing at Dianella, then going to high school at Guildford Grammar. I finished there in 1970, not knowing what I wanted to do, do next. A five-minute conversation with my father, now divorced and working as a doctor in Wagen, soon sorted that out. I had planned to study agriculture at Muresk with the view of eventually buying a farm of my own. Dad said, why don't you do medicine, then you can easily buy a farm. <laughs> Sounded good to me, so that's what I did. Sadly, it has taken me until two years ago to finally fa buy the farm. Still, better late than never. All of my high school years were spent in Dianella, next door to a vertically challenged but very spunky blonde chick. Well, there's lots more to that story. Uh, but Steffi and I married in 1977, just after I graduated in medicine. Four years later, I emphasise four, not less than one, we had our first child, the first of six. We're now lucky enough to also have six grandchildren. After graduating and working, and working in hospitals and training in general practice, I took over my father's practice in Inglewood in 1981. In 1985, I became a councillor with the city of Bayswater, and in 1993, I was elected as the member for Dianella. That seat was abolished in 1997, but I was fortunate to be elected as the member for Yokine, and under Richard Court was made Minister for Housing, Water Resources and Aboriginal Affairs. I lost the seat with the ending of the Court Government in 2001 and worked doing Aboriginal Heritage Surveys and Medicine for four years before being re-elected in Dawesville in 2005. My eternal thanks to Sally Plummer, who gave me the casting vote in a 16-all draw in the pre-selection. Four years were spent in opposition, where I was elected Deputy Opposition Leader in January 2008. As we all know, under Colin Barnett, 2008 was a great year for those on this side of the House, winning the election and forming government. Having an alliance with the Nationals rather than a coalition, I became one of the few Liberal Deputy Premiers in the state's history, serving in that role until February this year. In the last eight years, I've been Minister for Health, Aboriginal Affairs, Tourism twice, and Training and Workforce Development. I'm the longest serving Health Minister in the state's history, the longest Liberal Deputy Premier, and the fourth longest Deputy Premier, with Eric Ripper beating me for third by one month. Thanks, Colin. <laughs> I am often asked what are the highlights of my career. Such things are not easy, but there are a few. I still like to take credit for the desalination plant in Western Australia, the first desalination plant, even though it was the Labor Party who built it. At least I got the proposal to Cabinet submission stage when we lost the election in 2001. As we all know, success has many fathers. Ernie Bridge started the Farm Water Grant Scheme, which I continued and significantly expanded. Kevin Prince started the infill housing program in Lockridge, which I expanded to Bal Balga and many other sub suburbs. The only initiative that was mine alone was the Aboriginal Swimming Pool program, and I'm very proud of its continued success. I think I fared a little better my second time around, 
and I'm extremely proud of our hospital construction hospitals. With new hospitals in either built or under construction or about to start in Albany, Busselton, the Fiona Stanley Hospital, the Perth Children's Hospital, Midland Health Campus, Caratha Hospital, Newman, Onslow and Warren with the commitment of this government towards the Quad Centre. We've done major upgrades in Joondalup and Kalgoorlie and there's something like 30 or 40 other towns where we've done major changes. We made significant changes in health management such as the four hour rule and I think that our country health system changes, in particular the Royalties for Regions fund funded Southern Inland Health Initiative has transformed management of health in country Western Australia. We passed the Medicines, Poisons and Therapeutic Goods Bill in 2013 after 62 years of operation and the Public Health Bill after 103 years. Yet the decisions in health that gave me the greatest satisfaction were the ones few know about. In particular being able to write off debt, sorry to former treasurers who don't know about this, for those in severe financial difficulty such as a, an overseas woman with children who suddenly found herself with a huge maternity bill after her Australian partner left her. In particular, I was pleased to support Claire Murray and her family, initially so that she could have liver transplant surgery in Singapore and later to reduce the debt burden on her family. There was extensive public criticism of that decision and only those who know the details of her life story will understand the reason for that decision being the one at the top of my list. My only regret is that the outcome from the Murray family was so sad. I must say something about tourism as that was the portfolio that gave me the greatest enjoyment. The tourism industry and the people who work in it are amazing and some I am sure will remain friends for many years after my departure from this place. Hopefully there are many who believe I was successful in my relatively short period in the role but whether or not that is the case it is certainly an industry I love. I also wish to recognise the fantastic work done by those involved in the management and development of Rottnest Island. Now is the time for thank yous and first and foremost is my family. Stephanie, my wife of almost 40 years, has been my rock. Hang on. <laughs> Told you we'd do that, eh? <laughs> the intensity of my life, the intensity of my life over those years as GP a councillor and then at a as a Member of Parliament has at times been extreme. Throughout all that time and at the same time raising six children with little help from me, Stephanie's support and love has been continuous. I could not have done it without her and will be forever <coughs> grateful. <I don't laughs> Stop. I don't think I've ever said this before Stephanie but thank you. Being the child of a politician or any job with a high public profile is never easy with high expectations and a lack of father time. I would like to thank my children with my daughter Andrea and my granddaughter Alicia in the gallery and our extended family network for their love and continued support. My staff throughout that time as Member of Parliament have been amazing, especially those who have been with me for most of my journey. Christian Allier in particular, also in the gallery, uh, started as a patient in my surgery but soon progressed to campaign manager when I contested Dianella and worked for me for the majority of my career, including my four years out of parliament. He was soon joined by Mary Ann, then Melinda Hayes and Ian Whitepicken, two of those in the gallery. Our team became the foundation on which all else was based. My other electorate staff, Gary, Nikki, Ruth, Lynn White Pickin and now Amanda Gaynor and Ashley have all worked long and hard with great dedication and loyalty. I thank you all. As a minister, I've had many staff over the years and none better than those recently, where the atmosphere has been that of a close team of friends, all working to ensure we found the best way to support those in need of our help. Again, I thank you all. The support I've received from my ministerial departments over the years has been excellent and I'm greatly appreciative to all those involved. In particular, I mention Roger Payne, Jim Gill, Cedric Wyatt, Ben's dad, Hayden Lowe, Ruth Sheen and Stephanie Buckland, as well as the various board chairs, especially Peter Prendival, who gave oversight and direction. I've kept health separate as I want to particularly thank the Health Directors General, 
with whom I spent most of my time as Minister for Health. These are Kim Stobel, Professor Bryant Stokes and recently David Russell Vice. For those who haven't worked it out, health is a tough portfolio. Expectations are enormous and problems never far away. We went through hard times and good times aplenty, and their support and encouragement was always a certainty. I will always think fondly of the DGs and their senior staff, who I regard as friends, and hope they will eventually recover from the experience of my never-ending pressure and my midnight thought bubbles. Good luck to all of you in the future. I would especially like to thank my electorates who have supported me for 20 years in Parliament. To the electorate of Dawesville in particular, I give a huge thanks. My support over the 12 years I have represented them has steadily grown, moving from the second most marginal seat in the state to now being over 12 per cent, even beating my neighbour David Templeman. My supporters have been incredible, with many becoming close personal friends, some of whom are here today. For an example, our prawn, prawn fundraising function just last Sunday had 330 friends of supporters and we cleared over $25,000 for, uh, for the campaign to come. To all of you, thank you once again, especially to the presidents and members, past and present, of the Dawesville and Horsehead branches. I also want to recognise the media. I have great respect for the tough job you do and understand that it is your job to inform the people of Western Australia. And it is inevitable that at times members of parliament will not appreciate the way you have done so. However, I have always been treated by the media with great respect and friendship, and for that I am extremely grateful. I will never forget one of the media joining me in having tears in our eyes as I resigned the tourism portfolio in 2013. One reason I, from now, always refuse to do media interviews in the Japanese garden next to my house. Bad memories. Last but not least, I want to thank the staff of parliament. How you put up with us, I do not know. Some for many years. We keep you up to unreasonable hours. We are always needing something, whether it be papers, assistant advice, vanilla slices, cups of tea or coffee, and you are always there for us. For the last 20 years of making this house my second home, thank you. Finally, I want to say thank you to my parliamentary colleagues on both sides of this parliament. Well, most of you anyway. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, one exception. Thank you to our team for your friendship and support. Thank you for allowing me to be your deputy leader for so long. Thank to you, Colin, in particular, for your excellent leadership and for giving me such great opportunities and freedom to pr pursue those matters about which I have been passionate. Thanks to you, Roger, for your role as Shadow Minister, which I think you've performed exceptionally well. How do we judge our performance as politicians? Is it how many recognise us and say hello in the street? Is it the balance between good mail and abusive mail? And if you're a minister, you'll get some of that. Is it the vote in your electorate and the relationships you have formed with your constituents? Or is it the volume of invective from the opposition? Certainly it's not the latter as it seems that you are the worst minister in the history of the state while you're there, then the new minister takes on that role. <laughs> to your own side, you're the best minister ever while you're there, and then Kim Hu when you leave. <laughs> After 20 years of parliament, there are many things I've tried, some my own initiative, many from others. One thing is for sure, we share the credit when it works and we're given the blame when it fails. I see the members of this parliament doing their absolute best to support their constituents from both sides of this parliament. Sadly, seldom do the public get to see and appreciate the huge dedication and time and effort that the vast majority of members of this parliament make to their constituents. But you know what? It doesn't really matter. The great satisfaction you get as a member of a parliament is to do those things, to see your constituents' lives improved and even saved by the efforts of you or your staff. There's not too many who leave this place voluntarily unless they are long-serving members like myself. And we certainly don't stay for the pay and the working hours, as most of us could do better outside this place. But we still do it, and we still want to do it, because we love it. When I came to this place, I changed from being one of the highest regarded professions to one of the lowest, going from doctor to politician. Why is it that the public have such a low regard for members of parliament? I think it must be in our genes, 
as even for me, the part Irish background demands that I have a negative overall mm. reaction to politicians. The great news for us all is that those who actually know us don't think that way. We are OK, it's just all the rest of you that are bastards. <laughs> and despite the negative view of politicians, we're always in great demand to attend functions or open events or to meet constituents, and we're always treated with great respect when we attend. I think back over my 20 years of parliament, remembering the good times such as watching Brendan announce the alliance of the Nationals and Liberals in 2008 when we knew that you were going to Labor, <laughs> and the absolute gut-wrenching devastation of losing my seat in the 2001 election. Would I then, knowing all that, choose another course for my life? <clears throat> no way. I would do it all again in an instant, even if the events of those years were unchanged. There are certainly things I would do differently, mistakes I would seek to avoid, issues I wish I had pursued harder. But at the end, we're all human and we can only do the best we see at the time. To my fellow members who are leaving, about to speak, congratulations on your careers and I hope you enjoy retirement as much as I intend to. To those who stay, enjoy the time you have left as you never know when or how it may end. Make the most of every opportunity but above all, do what is right for you, your family and your constituents. To Zach Kirkup, the Liberal candidate for Dawesville, good luck. I'm very confident that you will make a great member of parliament. It gives me now the opportunity to make a parting statement that partly refers to Shadow Minister Roger Cook. And uh, apologies to God and the, <laughs> and the creators of Psalm 23. Yea, thy walk through the valley of the shadow of Roger, I shall fear no evil, for Colin art with me, and my friends doth comfort me. Surely their love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the assembly forever. Well, not quite forever, because it's now time to go. Thank you all for your attention. It's goodbye from me, and it's goodbye from him. <laughs>